What's up, y'all? It's me, Tasha C. And in this review recap, I will be reviewing Being Mary J Season 2, what is Episode 12, Part 2. I'm not going to put Part 2 down in the title. Season's finale, but it's Part 2 of the season finale. But anyway, y'all, shout out to my YouTube fam. My old, I mean, I don't like saying my new subscriber, but shout out to my YouTube fam. If you want to be, if you're not part of my YouTube fam already, it's nothing wrong. Welcome. I hope with open arms and subscribe. Subscribe button below. You know, I subscribe already and like and share this video. Excuse me, y'all. It's almost 2 o'clock. I forgot what time it was. Something like that. But I'm kind of hyped for some reason because it was an interesting turnout. This was better than part one, okay? But let's get into it. Alright. Now, to finish off, Carl, I mean, I think Cynthia comes in and to Mary Jane's office. Because she's the only place that she feels comfortable enough, whatever, right by now. And she says something on the line. She wants to leave at least with dignity. Something about a contract. They're trying to ever sign some line thing. A live one. But she wants to do a certain one. And she even trying to smoke a cigarette in Mary Jane's office. She's like, you can't smoke in here. And she's like, what? what? I'm just trying to smoke. You can't smoke in here. And Cynthia basically gives her a warning. Because she reminds her, I rem reminds her, you know, you're, uh, you probably don't remember the show. But I remember this little African-American lady that had a lot to say. You know, the show called Fame. I want to live forever. And I thought about, you know, what she said. And with fame, there's a cost. And just like if you think about just last the episode or part one. Now, she warned even Mary Jane that she was going to be basically used or scapegoat, whatever, in order for them to, like, basically tell her, hey, hey, goodbye. And Mary Jane, again, she's kind of giving Mary Jane a warning, like, yeah, you maybe get more money in this and this and this segment, but there's going to be a cost to pay, you know, price to pay for this. You don't know what you're getting into, Okay. That's what she basically gave to Mary Jane. Mary Jane was kind of just like this. But we do see later on that she was trying to call at this little mini celebration. Her brother PJ just graduated. All the family's around. Patrick's, I think, oh, I think it's uh, uh, other daughter. That we, uh, other daughter is there. I forgot what her name is. Nika Mino is there. And she announces that not only she's engaged, she's moving to South Carolina with her man. And, then, you know, I think the mama, you know, mama, uh, mama Mary Jane, I, what is her name? Helen. And Mrs. Ellen asks her, you know, what's the ring? I think that's who asked her. And she like this. I want a house, not the ring. That's okay, blah, blah, blah. Patrick walks out. He feels some type of way about losing, you know, one of his baby girls. Niecy's up there sitting here like this. Damn, this, this, and this. Like, here's somebody else making an accomplishment. You got Paul sitting up with Paul Jr., PJ. He tell him all these jobs. You got these job offers. You know, we already know that some with that, that be taken, you know, with that particular one. And he gonna be debt free and everything. And here she's sitting up here still trying to figure it out, whatever. And she's just like, you know, just kind of feeling like there's another slap of face of mommy. I ain't doing shit type of look. But, she, you know, she's trying not to show it. And so for a couple seconds while she's trying to talk to Steven guy to make this contract straighten out for, I guess, for um, Cynthia. Lisa comes there for a second. She just asks a question. Something about the cake. But I just remember it really wasn't much talk. It was kind of one of those awkward moments like, hi, hi there. Oh, my mom had gotten some of the cake. Oh, okay. And something, something else. But I don't remember the conversation because it really wasn't that much to talk about. It really was like, okay, I'm seeing you, but I really don't want to see you here type of thing. Whatever. But we're just paying it off. Play it off. We got... Hell, Miss Helen, Miss Helen, Mary Jane's mom. She's seen me, seen the other room. He's just like, I, I feel, I, I, I feel regrets and stuff for, for them, whatever, you know. But you know, she just kind of has that look, you know. But Helen's like this. Mrs. Helen is like, you know what, you, you know, you'll find, you'll figure it out, you know. That's kind of like one of the nicest uh, <laughs> compliments she said to the BC, whatever, because we already know usually she, Mrs. Mary Jane. Um, or Mrs. Paul, Paul uh, you know, I forgot, yeah, I could, uh, Mrs., uh, Mary Jane's mom, usually be on, you know, like, tough love type of thing, all right, 
But, but you know, it's like I said, she's bragging just like she make them phone calls to Mary Jane. We've seen this episode as well. She was calling about my baby, about to grab everybody. You know, he'd been going to year 10 years of school. He first was going to be an um, engineer. He was going to be a doctor. He was going to be, uh, you know, going to physics. He was going to go to this. He was going to go to this and this and this. And now my baby about to graduate. Get them jobs off. Okay. So anyways, this episode kind of didn't really deal with Carlos and the uh, parents in a way. So we'll see, I guess, in next season and if I watch it and review it. But... Now we have this thing where the Sheldon thing, let's get into that shit, okay? Now she comes over there the next day afterwards, you know, I mean, they're talking, whatever, and I think she's, you know, they're just spending the night. See, the thing is, she heard her alarm, she got scared, she was calling somebody and turned out, I guess, to be Sheldon. She stayed over at his house, he had, like, you know, the plastic, you know, the temporary, the temp, um, so some, I think the, the toothbrushes sometimes you get in places like a ho some hotels and stuff will have. But he got the Sam Club version of it, okay? A big ass buck of them because, but he's, you know, but he says like she can uh, um, um, sleep there. And next morning they're talking, and I think that's around the time she asked, like, are we in a relationship? You know, just wondering, you know, because they had a little talk, whatever, blah, blah, you know, talking about just general stuff. You know, he's just concerned about her and everything, or I think it's the next day or whatever. But basically, he's, she's like this. Yes, we are. So, of course, she figured, oh, that's my man or whatever. So, when she's getting through, getting between this new stuff or whatever in between, right? She comes there one day. She comes into the his house. And he makes like this. Uh, yeah, how, uh, how did you get in the house? Uh, the door's unlocked. Okay, well, all right. How did you get past the gate? She's like, well, I seen the driver, you know, you did one, 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 one across there. And that's what I found out from my alarm company when they called up there. Because, you know, she called the police to come out there to make sure they came. You know, when she, the alarm system, I think either call her or either the way around but yeah but that's what she found out so you could tell already you know she feel he feels some type of way because when she's even going right next going out the patio area where the pool is she's telling i think uh Kara, i always call her carla but her name's Kara. Kara. why well, i always do that to that lady's name and she's talking about yeah i just got home you could even see his face he already felt you know sheldon was already looking some type of way but he takes moves her shoes moves her purse i guess the other area but she's sitting there talking about, like I said, about the contract and about, you know, they're getting ready to negotiate for her prime time, you know, upcoming new, you know, position. So anyway, y'all, I, you know, she gets a call sometime a little bit, not too much later, um, from Val, also Mrs. Sally Richardson, um, I forgot what her marriage name is, but anyways, about how she heard from David, it turned out his, the David the dog used to have, named Monk or whatever, um, has passed away. And she feels some type of way, and somehow, you know, next minute we know, um, Mary J's sleeping in the bed, because she feels some type of way. And even Sheldon was telling her first, you should go call him and stuff like that, when he found out what's going on. She was like, you know, no, I'm going to let that be, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then, like I said, when she goes to sleep, y'all, she ends up pe peeing in his bed. And she's talking about, you know, I got baking soda. I got baking soda. We could, I could get it out. And he's like, no. And he, of course, with the average person, he was actually still kind of calm considering the service, you know, that she just pissed in his bed. And he's just like, did you have a medical condition or something? No, no, no. And um, anything. And then he was like, has this happened before? And she's, um, let me go ahead and lie. Let me go ahead and lie. Oh, no, it hasn't. And... She's just trying to say with the stressful work and hearing about the dog thing, I guess she's very close to the dog as well. That's what she's trying to pass it off as. Oh, Lord. I just, as soon as I seen it, I was like, why? Again? <laughs> oh, damn. Like, yeah, so Mary Jane, I mean, she's going to get therapy, but looks at the things she, the therapy she may get uh, is totally different that she may have to have included. And I'll get that in a couple minutes. So anyways... We have like a couple days later, whatever, and Shell and her is talking. I think she's in her pajamas and her Uggs, whatever. And the conversation is being brought up about she's noticing something in the bathroom that changed. Like, there's been a couple of days in a row. And it's like her toothbrush basically goes bye bye, and she has to find and get another fresh toothbrush out the Sam Cup container and shit. And. She basically decided to ask, like, well, why is my toothbrush always moved or I, I had to get another one, whatever, from the back, the you know, stash? And he, of course, with his, you know, big-ass Webster Dictionary and ass words and sentences, talking about some, well, 
when I think about a toothbrush, and you know, I'm, you know, pushing 50 and the above, whatever, you know, I think about, you know, it reminds me of something, you know, I'm sending my own ways and my, so I already knew kind of the way he was talking that what he, why he had a problem with her toothbrush, or also known as you leaving the shit in my house and I really want to be by myself type of person thing. Then it reminded him of them cohabitation type of thing. In other words, I basically don't want to be reminded and I don't want you living with me, even though I say we're a relationship. So, of course, she's having a relationship. Then why would you tell me you want to be in a relationship or whatever? Do you want to get married and have kids? No. He's like, now all of a sudden, he's like, he's like this. No, I don't want to get married. I don't want to have kids and stuff like that. He wants it to give her this type of thing. He wants a relationship, whereas, as far as we, it's already it's also been made in this episode, of course, if we already didn't know, about they haven't even slept together yet. She's like, well, why you didn't do it? And he's just like, well, consider circumstances. Like, you're always talking about your ex. You mean to kind of pee in my bed and all this other stuff. But even if that stuff didn't happen, Sheldon has his own set, his own ways, and he's, you know, uniquely and everything. And so, to make a long short story, you know, she said, well, you knew I wanted to free my ex, and I did it on television. He's like, well, I thought it was a gimmick. She's like, no. And then he's basically telling you, you can have a baby, but, you know, just go to one of them sperm donors and call it a day. And then he's giving an offer like, you know, when we get more serious, we can probably get condos on the same floor. And when it's meant, when we, that means, it also, I guess, when they actually, like, visit each other, be each other, spin each other, not each other's houses, whatever, but, you know, just to make sure she better not leave a damn toothbrush and shit, it would be, we would actually feel there wouldn't be no more obligated type of thing, making it seem like it would be more sentimental we would be doing just because and all this other damn shit, whatever, saying. And she basically said, you know what? Time to take my ass out of here, take my ass home, and I won't be chosen door number the, um, two, whatever. She just was just sick and tired. Like, she's basically like this. You know what? I want marriage and the kids and blah, 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 and you talk about relationship, but that's not really what you're going by, whatever bullshit. And, but in the end, he's basically like this. He was like, well, based on, you know, the, your history of men, you know, I could see, you know, that's, you know, how you're going to be. Or some kind of rude ass comment along the lines, like, basically like, okay, well, we know how you roll any damn way, so whatever. And she's just like, okay, I might have had these type of dudes and I may be my certain age or whatever, but I still want and I know what I want and I know what I deserve. So she's like, thank you and good night. All right. And I should have like, and she should have went ahead and went in this bathroom and just took all the rest of them two brushes we can. Like you go buy some more because at least had about four or five of them. <laughs> but yeah. So they do talk later on and he does issue an apology for her, but she's still saying like, even though she doesn't know she wants to do the marriage thing. Um, you know, I mean the baby thing or marriage thing. She at least wants to be able to be comfortable enough in the end to be in a long-term monogamous, relation, monogamous relationship that allows her to keep her to the toothbrush at the man's house or feel that comfortable. So it's kind of like, you know, they broke it up the same way to begin and that's pretty much on standstill or permanently off, you know, just like we notice unless they throw them out all together that we notice the married you know you notice like that the focus was on David this time instead of the married dude that she was with last season. So, anyways, and the Cuddy Buddy, yeah, Cuddy Buddy made a couple of guest appearances and shit, but <laughs> but so here's the interesting drum roll part. Now. We see Lisa, because like I said, it was a lot of things that didn't stand out, was didn't stand out, whatever. But we see Lisa bring some stuff, I guess, because she was taking care of David's dog when um, they were, uh, you know, uh, taking it out with David's away, whatever, and stuff like that. So she brings the stuff, and I'm sorry, your dog. And then she's basically like, you know what, I'm bringing some happy lasagna, and we can just talk, and woo, 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 and kumbaya, and all this other stuff, whatever. And even without even knowing all the information, you kind of know that, you know, her tensions, you know, something about Lisa, but she's been on some other shit, okay? And, um, or, you know, basically on some foul shit, okay? Breaking codes or whatever. And, um, so before, you know, you had, um, Mary Jamin trying to sit there and call David and leave the perfect voicemail, and it seemed like at least three or four times she, you know, the, the, the message thing, telling her, okay, you finished? Do you want to delete it? She would say it, and she wouldn't have... What she tried to say in that little voicemail, because he was, you know, he had his phone, like, powered off, whatever. Uh, well, you know, it's, she couldn't, she didn't have enough time to say what she wanted to say in a couple seconds. But anyways, she's driving, whatever, like I said, Cynthia says her last words, and her and Carl in the background drinking some wine, wear cups, whatever, again, and shit. And then, she's driving 
I know it's like saying Ron's time. So David and Lisa's basically telling her how she feels. She was like, I know you don't feel the same way. Because like I said, Ron is time for some reason. Mary Jane, I forgot where she was coming from or going to. But she's driving her car. And somehow a David either hits his phone. And he I know he damn sure didn't want Mary Jane to hear all this stuff. You know, like I said, Emily is not there again. Emily, I guess, doesn't want dogs. They're having that general conversation at first. But unfortunately, what Mary Jane hears and the rest of us hear, you know, after that is a total different thing, okay? So Emily is trying to get her mom or on bait on the plane again. Um until the doctor says she's not allowed to go in there, you know, or get later in her pregnancy. It's not safe to, you know, keep going around and around the world and shit. So they're talking, you know, like I said, Lisa around this time is sitting here saying, you know, I know you don't feel the same way thing about me. I love you, blah, blah, blah. And I know you don't feel the same way. And David's like, okay, I know we're friends. And she's just like, but you know how I feel this third way. So when whatever this do do whatever with the phone all of a sudden here's Mary J star hey David blah 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 and you just hear basically Lisa Venti Moore putting David on blast like all her feelings were and you know how I feel about you not done all this and when that night happened you know when especially you know we went down and he's like this he was like well yeah that one night she was like with well, all the other nights because all six count too and Mary Jane is already like not only shocked but she's upset and just crying crying like hell she's seen all this stuff even just hearing along not only that they've been engaging in you know in, in sexual activity together just period already which is in shock so just to even add in more which are even something something else whatever and I you know when I you stand on my couch when you know you and Mary Jane broke up you went on my couch and I took care of you and I took care of your dog and then remember when to start your company I invested fifty thousand dollars you got from me and he was like yeah but I paid you back but did you tell Mary Jane and he's like no you know he just was kind of silent or something like that but you just see Mary Jane face and we already know like I said she's at the light I think at this time traffic light on red and this dude you know she's hearing anything and they hear like the cars or something and that's when David and Lisa realize that you know because it's on speaker or as well that she hears what the hell's going on I could have sworn maybe I might have seen different and I didn't rewind the part but did I could have sworn David accidentally hit his phone was trying to turn the phone off it didn't pay attention to what it was and accidentally had it picked up the phone on speaker comment below if, if it was different y'all because you know <laughs> but anyways I was just so shocked even what she was saying that I forgot that what he did with the phone thing or or I slightly thought it was intentional but yeah so she is just so shocked and whatever and then you hear a car you know a car hump behind Mary Jane because the light is green and then she goes and she, I think it was raining too or something like that but all I know is is that she tried to avoid hitting the car in the process because she just probably just all just all scrambled in the head now and, you know, by the way, you know, Lisa also said she finally got help therapy. I think Val hooked her up with a uh, therapist and she's been diagnosed depressed. I don't know, that was just so random. But, yeah, but like I said, all of a sudden she tried to swerve and hits, not to a pole, but she hits, like, something at the corner, like a mailbox, a box, whatever. All we know is, is that her car crashes into something on the side. It wasn't a store or nothing like that, but we, she hits something. Okay. And that's, and then we get credits. And that's it. So if Mary Jane's in an accident. We don't know how bad off she is. I mean, we know that she there'll be another season most likely. But now she's been in a car crash after hearing all this information. You know. And we all know there's still some feelings there linger with her, David. But now it's like this betrayal on... Because we don't know when David and Lisa slept with each other. Lisa was saying about the birthday. But it's this thing is, they crossed the line. It's just a lot of stuff she just found out. And, and and then this happens and it's like the end but that's all i got y'all i hope you have a pleasant week pleasant night pleasant weekend but yeah but that's all we got because uh, they ended it right there dang she went from a breakup to finding out some fuckery between who <laughs> with with that mess but anyway y'all i'll see y'all in the next video y'all take care and have a great night